Hello, I'm Mike Gratticelli, editor of HD Camera Guide. I'm here today with Chuck Westfold, technical advisor at Canon, with the new Canon XF305 camcorder. Now, the cool thing about this camcorder is it's really the first one from Canon that's got a solid state recording back. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, actually, uh, we uh, decided to put in uh, compact flash memory as our recording medium. Uh -huh. uh, we really wanted to be able to provide our users with uh, what we felt was uh, the most uh, reasonably priced but yet high enough performance uh, option for their storage. Okay. So there's actually uh, it's a two card system, uh -huh. hot swappable, uh, that has a basic ability to uh, do relay recording which means that you can fill one card up and go immediately to the next even in the middle of a take. Nice. Um, and it also has the ability to uh, copy a uh, recorded clip from one card to another. Uh -huh. um, so uh, we think that the, the cost of running uh, the system with these cards is really going to be one of the attractive features about the new camcorder. Great. Now I know it comes with two 32 gigabit cards, is that correct? Well, it's, they're not supplied with it. Okay, okay. But, uh, but they're uh, kind of like a, what I would consider to be a good uh, standard capacity card because a 32 gig will give you roughly 80 minutes of video at the highest quality. Great, that's what I was getting at. And speaking of the highest quality, this thing has a new codec in it, actually developed by Canon. It's an MPEG-2 codec, but what's different about it? There's a lot of codecs out there, what's different? Well, there's two things about this codec that are important. Okay. Uh, number one, it's a 422 color sampling. Uh, and that really is uh, very important because it produces a much cleaner image, especially important in a studio environment if you're going to do any green screen work. Okay. Now, it's a 50 megabit per second uh, quota, uh, codec in uh, MPEG-2. And that MPEG-2 means that it's very easy for us to be able to uh, uh, coordinate with a, the major nonlinear editing systems. And so as this camera, camcorder comes to the market, it'll be uh, supported by Apple, Avid, Adobe, and also Grass Valley Edius. That's, does that mean that the, it's kind of wrapping it in some kind of an MXF file so that they can actually natively read it? Exactly right. It's an MXF wrapper, so it's, uh, it's an industry standard for both the audio and the video content. And uh, essentially, uh, uh, we worked very, very closely with those uh, uh, software partners to be able to make sure that we had good support. Great. Now this camera can also do variable frame rates. It's up to, up to 50 megabits, but it can also do 30 and 25 megabits. Is that correct? Yes, 35 and 25 are the options. Uh -huh. um, and also on the framing rates, you can go on the 1080, you can go 60i, 30p, 24p. On the 720p option, you can go 60p, 30p, and 24p. So yeah. that's we're talking really high quality. Yeah, and in addition to the standard rates, there's also uh, fast motion and slow motion capability here uh, from 12 frames per second up to 60, depending upon the camera settings. Of course, it's a Canon camera, so you know that's got a great glass. Uh, tell us a little bit about the lens. This is actually specifically designed for this camera, is that right? Exactly. We started from scratch on the, you know, on the entire optical system here. Okay. So what we've got here is actually a new 18x optical zoom lens that has a th uh, focal length equivalent of 29 to 527 millimeter. And that's, wow. a, that's a nice range, but what makes it even more impressive is that the aperture is f1.6 in the wide end, only 2.8 on the telephoto. Right. So that means that for low light, this is going to be outstanding. Okay. Now, one of the reasons we were able to uh, develop this lens to those specs was because we're using a 1 3rd inch CMOS chip system. And uh, it, had we gone to the bigger chip, we would not have been able to put this big of a lens at this kind of a price point. Uh. So with the 1 3rd inch CMOS, that's brand new to us as well. We have a uh, full raster 1920 by 1080 three chip system. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, the sensitivity and the quality off of those chips is nothing short of fantastic. Great. So uh, low light on this camera is going to be a pleasure compared to uh, you know, some of the previous stuff that uh, people have seen in one third. Great. And speaking of also, the, the sensor itself is using a thing called the Digic processor, which is exclusive mm -hmm. also to Canon. That's correct. You know, we uh, actually started marketing Digic in uh, the still cameras back in 2002, but we've developed it in video as well. We're now into Digic DV3, which is our latest version on for, for video. Uh, and what that does for us is to give us the cleanest possible image coming out of those sensors and maintain that quality uh, even in low light without losing detail. Great. Now, the other thing that uh, happens is because it's such a fast processor, uh -huh. we can actually double the scan rate off the chip, and that helps to reduce skewing. Great, great. The ergonomics of this camera is, is wonderful, the way they've balanced it. Um, talk a little bit about the kind of, they've put a lot of effort into the design of the camera, haven't they? They certainly did. Uh, there was really uh, a couple of different areas of focus that they had. One of them was to try and uh, set up the controls in such a way that uh, basically the, the videographer would be able to know where to find what they were looking for. Okay. So all the lens controls are right up front here. You've got your focus and your zoom. 
you also have all your camera main operation controls in the middle of the camcorder, and then you've got your storage options and your battery in the back. So basically, it's a very logical flow as far as where these controls are, are positioned. But probably more important are the ergonomics of actually how videographers shoot. Right. And this camera has tremendous flexibility in terms of that design. So for example, there is a set of controls on the top grip that can be used for shooting at a low angle. There is also a set of controls on the side for shooting in a more conventional shoulder type grip. Right. And there's also the difference between this is the cool part. This viewer. is the cool part. And I'll show that a little bit back here, actually. Four inch viewer with 1.23 million dot resolution that can be positioned to either the left or the right. So that really gives a great deal of flexibility to how the videographer prefers to shoot. It can even be angled all the way forward and then mirrored so that uh, you can change the orientation of the image to be able to fit how you're going to shoot. Now, that, I want to uh, also show you that there are a couple of other features here that are worth talking about. Right. We have a new edge form, edge focus assist here, where on the edge of the monitor, there's actually a waveform monitor that is showing you your focus at three discrete areas in the picture. Uh -huh. And so when you're out in a bright situation and you don't necessarily have time to study the image that close, you can just check that waveform monitor and you get the information right away. Right in the viewfinder. Directly. Very nice. Very now, nice. There's also standard waveform monitor and vector scope for people who need to be able to check their uh, quality before they start shooting. Uh -huh. And there's an electronic viewfinder. If you can't use the LCD for whatever reason, you can go right in on eye level, and that particular viewfinder has 1.5 million dots, so it's even higher resolution. Nice. So whether you need to shoot high or low or in the studio on a tripod, no matter how you like to do it, the camera's basically set up to help you out. Great. What I also like about this camera is it's got lots of automatic controls, but you can actually turn them all off and actually do it manual. It gives you a lot of creative freedom, is that correct? Absolutely. Um, we tried to make sure that the camera did have the automation so that it could be handed to somebody who isn't necessarily a, a totally experienced videographer and still get a good shot. Right. But there's total manual override. So you can set up the camera any way you need to in terms of uh, exposure, in terms of color, in terms of framing rate, anything that you would want to do to change the look of your picture. There's even such things as being able to change your gamma curves and also uh, the knee setting for the various different highlight control. Right. So there's a lot of different stuff going on there. Great. You know, this camera is in a category where there's quite a lot of similar uh, cameras in the models, but I think uh, this is a real game changer in a lot of different ways. Can you just talk about a little bit about what makes this camera different than other cameras? I think, it, I think what's, what it is is that as you look at the entire package of what this has to offer, there's really nothing else out there that has got the combination of the lens, the chip, and the processor that this does. And also on the back end, just the workflow options with that new codec and the compatibility with the editors and the, and the compact flash situation with the, the dual card slots. Yep. You know, it's just all there. And so basically, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, Videographers who are looking for the right tool to be able to handle their job, this is going to appeal to a much greater percentage of, of uh, videographers than ever before. Great. So the, the real question is, when can we get our hands on it? When is it actually shipping? Well, we're here at, uh, at the NAB show in mid-April. I would say that in roughly 10 weeks' time, which would be about the end of June, it should be on the market. Can you get me a deal? <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you very much. This is Mike Gratisoli for HD Camera Guy.